But first, if you are under 25 looking for a job, it is tough and likely to be so for many months to come. Recent research by a think tank called the Resolution Foundation has found that young people had been hardest hit by the economic effects of the pandemic. One in three 18 to 24 year olds have lost work, either through being furloughed or losing their jobs completely. Now that's compared to 15% of 35 to 44 year olds. Now the organisation is also warning that an extra 600,000 young people could find themselves not in employment or training by the end of this year, taking total youth unemployment to 1 million. So that's 1 million of the next generation. Those with ample energy, focus, dreams, aspirations, being left out of the job market. So we want to hear from you today. If you or your grown-up kids are struggling to find work or in a kind of strange limbo, unable to go to college or find a job or get an apprenticeship, how many of them have been assured that after being furloughed there will be a job remaining for them? 08085 909 693 is the number, text 85058, or you can get in contact with us on social media via BBC Five Live. You can also email me, nihal at bbc.co.uk. Now, rather than just paint a picture of doom and gloom, we always like, as you know, to speak to people who have what they believe to be solutions to these issues and what the government can do. Roshanara Ali is one such person, Labour MP for Bethnal Green and Bow. She's also co-founder of One Million Mentors, which is an extraordinary charity which looks at the importance of mentoring to young people. She's calling for a national youth corps to be set up. This would be a government-backed work scheme for 16 to 25-year-olds, which would guarantee they receive the minimum wage for a job or training opportunity until the end of next year. Now, I spoke to Roshanara earlier and asked her how the scheme might work. What, what I'm proposing with a group of charities uh, and uh, media partners uh, in, in The Guardian, um, with people like Will Hutton and others, is that the government should give young people, the one million that are going to face unemployment by the end of the year, a an income guarantee so that they can then focus on getting training, apprenticeships and jobs into the labour market. And it's going to take some time for that happens because, of course, the labour market has weakened significantly. But it's really important that we don't have another generation who is scarred by unemployment. And so the government needs to guarantee and underwrite, if you like, their wages, because uh, at the moment they have nothing, no support from the government. The second part of that is then getting uh, businesses and uh, public sector employers to offer up opportunities and in the form of a national youth corps where young people can sign up to those opportunities, whether it's training or volunteering in charities, because charities need help as well. Uh, and they don't then have to worry about paying young people because the government would provide that that income and traineeships. And also we think that the government should also look at supporting those organisations that work with young people who need uh, more support, uh, who need mentoring, who need training and backup and confidence building to help them get into the world of work. So the, the National Youth Corps is an idea that we're proposing that the government should support so that we have an organising mechanism for employers as well as young people to be able to come together uh, in providing, um, in order to provide them opportunities that, that they desperately need at a time where there's a real sense of hopelessness for young people. Um Russian are obviously the question everyone will ask, well, how much will this cost considering the amount yep. of money the government has already given in financial yep. support for businesses yep. and furlough yep. schemes, etc.? Yeah, so, so at the moment, the government's spending hundreds of billions of pounds supporting businesses uh, in giving them loan facilities, providing grants. Uh, and it's right that, they should, they, that they've should that they stepped in to support businesses to keep them afloat, otherwise more people will face unemployment. They're also providing help to uh, millions of people who need um, to be needed to be furloughed. But there's literally nothing for young people. In fact, young people are going to be hit the hard, like uh, the hardest now. So what we're proposing is that the government invests, uh, it's going to cost probably between 1.5 billion to 2 billion, but the savings will be in the billions because it means that young people are not damaged and scarred by this recession. It also means that the younger generation who are healthier, 
uh, can be trained to, to fill gaps in the labor market. For instance, in the care sector, there's a real shortage of uh, staff in agriculture, but also in terms of green jobs and other areas where we're going to need um, to retrofit um, homes. We're going to need to um, ensure that some of the areas where there is likely to be a growth in employment, those jobs are provided for young people, if they're trained up, they're more likely to get into those jobs as we start to recover, which of course it will take some time. But if we don't support our young people to be able to fill those jobs in the future, then that would actually cost the country much more. A million people, uh, a million young people, that's a lot of lives. If they're left for years uh, to do very little, then the educational investment that's been made uh, for them, uh, that's been provided for them, is going to, to go into reverse. What they've learned from the education system uh, is not going to be put to use. Uh, so we think that the investment would be worthwhile for young people when they've had no support. So as we look towards budget statements and, and spending reviews, it's very important that the government provide some, uh, some opportunities for young people. There's also the apprenticeship levy and apprenticeship fund that the government set up. There's hundreds of millions of pounds that of in money that hasn't been spent. So the government doesn't even look, need to look that far in terms of finding new money. They could use existing money to reconfigure that so that young people have an income guarantee. But it's very important that the money goes directly to young people so that they can then focus on, with some conditionality, of course, that they should be either in training or in apprenticeships or other uh, economic activity or volunteering activity uh, that is valuable to the country. And I think that it's really important that young people have a stake in our society, that they are able to make a contribution. There's so much uh, commitment and passion among young people, uh, and yet that is being uh, damaged right now because they haven't got hope. And that's why it's really important that the government puts some investment into them rather than ignoring them. How would you avoid it being perceived by young people as exploitation, not career? So going into fruit picking, for instance, which is seasonal, they might not regard that as a career. Uh, caring even, they might well, not I think, regard I it as a career. I think the Youth Corps needs to be designed with young people's involvement. What we're saying is that there should be an income guarantee for young people and they should, of course, apply for the opportunities that they are interested in. So if they're interested in working in the care sector and there are many young people who will be interested, then that should be encouraged. They should be provided provided with the training and support, but they should also have an income guarantee so they're not having to worry about uh, where their, where their um, you know, weekly uh, income is going to come from. And then, of course, there will be new areas where young people can make a big contribution in, particularly around the environmental agenda. Uh, if we have infrastructure investment in the country, it's really important our young people are trained and supported so that uh, they can get those jobs. Because historically, what we found is that even where there are economic opportunities, and I've seen that in my own constituency, with the Olympics, for instance, or in Canary Wharf in the 80s, when the Canary Wharf towers were going up, and the banking jobs were created, and so on, young people were not part of the uh, plan. Uh, they weren't involved. And it meant that that their needs and their skills um, needs were not met from the outset. And it then made it harder for them to get into those jobs, even though those, those jobs were on their doorstep. So it's very important, of course, you're absolutely right, that they should have choices. But at the moment, they have no choice. They have no money. The vast majority of them who are going to face unemployment will have nothing. And we're looking at 600,000 additional young people between the age of 18 and 24,000 who are going to be made unemployed, who are not going to have a job by the end of the year. So it's not about exploitation. It's about making sure that they have an income and they have choices and that businesses are uh, able to to play their part as well, because they're getting a lot of support from the government. And those who are not in financial distress, uh, who can um, help, um, some of them are stepping in and saying they're very interested. 
uh, it's really important we all pull together to support the next generation because we're going to need them more than ever before to help us recover from the the this this crisis. Uh, but also, we're going to need young people, particularly if there's likely to be a second wave, and I hope there isn't, because if we train up and young, uh, our young people to be volunteers, um, volunteers in the community, to work with charities, to work uh, in jobs where there are um, there is a need, or work in the healthcare system where they, they need more support and so on, in the care, care system in particular, provided they have the training and the income, then they're going to they're gonna make a big contribution to our country. And it's important to think of uh, what young people can do for their country because that's what they want to do. And they've shown through their political activism and their campaigning uh, around the environmental issues, for instance, before COVID with the Extinction Rebellion campaign, the vast, vast majority of those people, young people were campaigning, were peacefully protesting. They're now out campaigning uh, against racism and injustice in our country. There's a great sense of frustration um, that they're being left out of the of the uh, equation and they're being ignored by government uh, and they are absolutely uh, central to how we recover as a country from both the health crisis but also the economic crisis.